Hello everybody, it's Jess here with Lush Jess. Thank you so much for watching. I have another recipe video for you guys. So this video is quick and easy meals. There's gonna be nothing linked down below because you don't need a recipe for any of these. This is what you make when you have like no time and you wanna go through the drive-thru. Don't do that, make these <laughs> instead. So I've got about six recipes and we're gonna jump into it. All right, I have been making these for years. This is meatball subs. Let me show you the quick and easy way we do it. You can do this in a pot. I like to do it in my crock pot. I just spray it and then I dump in about half a bag of meatballs. You could do more or less, however much you want. I top it with some pasta sauce. I like the kind just right from a can. It tastes fine and it's like a dollar, but you can use whatever sauce you like. I've used lots of different kinds. It turns out all about the same. So you just get that in there. I like to give it a quick stir to make sure it's all the sauces combined and you're gonna stick the lid on and it's gonna go on low for just about three to four hours until they get hot the meatballs are already cooked once they get hot you can take sub rolls I've also done this on Hawaiian rolls or um, hot dog buns even if you want something really cheap all of these recipes are super cheap as well you're gonna put the meatballs in the rolls I like to cram as many as I can in there this reminds me a lot of Subway's meatball subs and it's so much cheaper and way, way easier than going through a drive-thru at Subway. Once I get them in there, we're going to top it with cheese. I like pepper jack cheese on mine. Um, David likes pepper jack too, but I put, tonight I put um, mozzarella on his. And we're just going to stick these in the oven and toast them. Just melt the cheese basically is all we're doing. I don't like it really toasted, just kind of melty. I like to do it just in a round pan so they don't fall over and look how delicious those are they took no time there's like three ingredients and I like to serve it with some fruit maybe some chips we can have leftover meatballs um, I'll do another sandwich or something like that and it's so yummy moving on I'm gonna show you guys my shortcut Indian fried bread tacos these are so yummy so all you're gonna do is brown up some ground beef. I've got about a pound here using my meat masher. I'm gonna break that up and get it nice and brown. I'm gonna throw in a packet of taco seasoning once I drain the grease off. And then um, just a, you know the amount of water at the back of the package calls for. I like to just eyeball that. And this is optional, but we also like to add um, some black beans into that. I use about half a can of black beans and as that's just simmering, getting nice and hot, um, and the beans are cooking through, warming up, we're gonna start on the taco, the shells. So we're gonna heat up some vegetable oil in a skillet. We're gonna get it warm. I like to do it like on medium high. Here comes the shortcut. The shortcut. We're gonna use biscuit dough instead of making our own dough. So I did not roll these out as good as I should have. I just kind of use my hands. They still turn out fine, but if you want them bigger than little slider tacos, you're definitely gonna wanna use like a rolling pin. You're gonna make a hole in it with your fingers and this is gonna help it not puff up. It's gonna stay um, where you can fold it into a taco. These, there's something about how just melt in your mouth delicious these turn out. They kind of, stay really moist and they don't dry out and they're kind of puffy and squishy and so you're just going to keep doing this this does not take any time like 30 seconds you're going to turn them over and cook them for about another 30 seconds you're just looking for them to get nicely golden brown and i'm going to go ahead and flip that first one over and you can see how brown that is these are going to be our taco shells you have to try this. If you've never had Indian fry bread tacos, this is a really quick and easy version of them. Um, okay, I'm also gonna, well, after I do this, I'm gonna drain them on some paper towels. I wanna show you a, another way you could do it with just a tortilla. These aren't gonna get as puffy, but this is another way that we try to change up taco night and we just fry some flour tortillas. This is like a chalupa or something from Taco Bell. These are also really good. I wanted to show you all that. But here is how we serve it. We just have our Indian fry bread tacos with some of the meat mixture, cheese, lettuce, sour cream, chips and salsa on the side. You could do whatever toppings you want. Moving on. I have made these for so many years. They're called crescent roll-ups. I kind of made this up. We're gonna start with a can of crescent rolls. You could use the kind that has no seams, but these were so much cheaper. So I just went with the Walmart ones. And we need 
to have all of these seams pinched together, we need a flat sheet of crescent roll dough. So I'm just gonna kind of pinch it together. I should have done this better too. It didn't stay closed. Use your rolling pin and really get it flattened if you can. And then you're gonna top it with whatever, whatever lunch meat you like. You could do turkey, that's what I'm doing. You could do ham, roast beef, pastrami, it, literally anything you want. And we're just gonna lay these out. Lay it all the way across. You could put as much or as little as you want. This is really just showing you the method and you could change it up a million different ways. Um, and then you're gonna top it with cheese. Now stay tuned because I'm gonna show you, this one's for the kids. I'm gonna show you a more grown up version that my kids don't like, but it's way better. So just stick around. Sliced cheese works better, but you can use the shredded, it's fine. It might just be a little more messy as you're rolling it up. Once you get your cheese on there, you're gonna start at one end and you're gonna roll these as tight as you can. It's like rolling a burrito or something. Um, or a stromboli. So if, it, if the seams come open a little bit, it's no big deal. Just kind of pinch them closed. Take a bread knife and you're gonna just slice them into about, what is that, like half an inch to an inch pieces. And you're gonna put them on your baking sheet. And you're just gonna keep slicing them. It's okay if the cheese falls out, we can put it back on. The sliced cheese doesn't do that, but that's just what I had. So we're gonna stick it on the baking sheet and this is what they look like before they go in the oven. Let me show you the way I like to make them for me and David. So it's another sheet of crescent rolled dough. And then you can put whatever sauce you like. Chick-fil-A sauce is really good on this, by the way. But I had some honey mustard. This was so yummy. So I just squirted a little bit. You don't want too much because you don't want it to ooze out everywhere. Just a little white layer. I took my spoon and just kind of made sure it was spread all around. And then I'm going to go in with another layer of turkey just like the other ones so we're gonna do another layer of that and then you could do whatever cheese you like I have this nice pepper jack cheese and the pepper jack with the, like the sweet honey mustard turned out really really good so I would recommend this combination but I've done it with lots of different meats and cheeses and it always turns out good you're gonna again roll it up as tight as you can take your time with it just kind of press down as you roll to get it nice and tight. If a little bit of sauce comes out or cheese comes out, it is no big deal, it will be fine. And just roll it all the way down. And now we're gonna take our bread knife again and we're going to slice them into like small pieces. You could do it smaller or thicker. I like about medium, like maybe an inch or less than an inch. And we're gonna put those on a cookie sheet and let me show you what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take some melted butter we're going to brush the tops with melted butter. Yum, yum. I've also done this for parties, big hit. Then you're gonna take some everything bagel seasoning and top those bad boys with the everything bagel seasoning. And these are ready for the oven, 375, just until they're nice and golden brown. It only takes less than 20 minutes or so. Here's the kids version. And here is mommy and daddy's version. These are so good always a big hit when we take them anywhere or just for a quick meal so we did them for dinner one night and we had the sliders with some chips very quick way to jazz up dinner all right next up one of my kids favorites garlic bread pizzas all right another like three ingredient meal here you take some garlic texas toast or any kind of garlic bread you like you can even do the cheese one whatever you're gonna throw it down on a cookie sheet. I like to line mine with parchment paper to make it really easy to clean up. You're gonna spoon your favorite pizza sauce on top. You don't need a lot of sauce, just a thin layer for us. And I'm just gonna do that on all of the slices. And then we're going to top it with whatever pizza toppings you like, anything. We keep it really, really simple. We just do some cheese and pepperoni, so I did most of these cheese and then I did like, well, I did half cheese and half pepperoni. Yeah, that's what I did. So I have kids that like cheese, I have kids that like pepperoni, but you could do sausage, vegetables, whatever on this. And there's something about these, you'd bake them in the oven, 375 um, till they're nice and brown. To me, these tasted like Detroit style pizza, almost like a deep dish. They were very moist and soft on the inside, but the outside had a little bit of crunch. You have to make these, they were so good. All right. I have had you guys tell me that you want me to show you how I do my burrito bowls. This is one of our easiest go-to meals. I, I always make this, like it's, if I don't know what to make, I make this. So I just take some ground beef, 
I use my meat masher again, I kind of break it up. While that's browning, I go ahead and start some rice. If you don't have a rice cooker, you should definitely get one because it makes rice so yummy. Always rinse your rice, makes it so good. Once the meat is done browning, I throw in, well, and I drain the grease, of course, I throw in the taco seasoning and the water. I always eyeball it. I never measure it. Are you guys like that too? And I throw in half a can of black beans. This is just how I make my tacos. You could do it however you want. You could do this with chicken. You could do this with um, anything like chicken or steak or ground beef. This is just a method. So I've got my meat and bean mixture right here. I'm going to let that just kind of simmer for a few minutes while the rice finishes cooking. Now let me show you how I jazz up these bowls. So I start my bowl. This is my personal one. Let me show you how, how I like it. I throw in the, on top of the rice, I put the beef and beans. We had a little bit of cheese sauce left after the kids got through with it. So I put a little bit of cheese sauce and then some shredded cheese on top. Topped it with some lettuce. I love a good crunchy lettuce in there. And then I did some avocado. My hands are clean and this is my own bowl. So I'm throwing in some diced avocado, some taco sauce. We always have Taco Bell taco sauce laying around. So I throw in some hot sauce from there and then some sour cream. And then I also like to have something really crunchy in there. So I did some, just a handful of uh, Doritos. This is like a Chipotle burrito bowl, but at home and for so much cheaper. Okay, last but not least, this is another one I have done for years, three ingredient baked ravioli. I've also call, heard this called lazy lasagna. So you spray a baking dish, you're gonna throw down some of your sauce. I'm using the canned kind, you could use whatever kind you want. And I take frozen, this is not defrosted, frozen ravioli, this is the cheese. I've also done it with beef. Use it any kind you want. We're gonna throw down a layer of ravioli. Simple enough. And we're gonna layer this like lasagna, but it is ravioli and these are ice cold frozen. It's all gonna cook in the oven. So once you get all of the ravioli down, you're gonna do another layer of sauce and we're gonna top that with some cheese. And then we're gonna layer this all over again. So we're gonna do another layer of ravioli and this does not have to be perfect. It can be messy looking. It doesn't matter. It will cook perfectly in the oven. So we're going to do another layer of ravioli. Getting it all in there. And then we're going to do some more sauce. I've also added cream to this and it turns out really good, like a vodka sauce. And then we're going to do more cheese. Now I didn't have enough ravioli to do a whole nother layer on the top. So I just kind of patched it in where I could. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, this will be delicious once it all cooks. So I only had like a few ravioli for the very top layer, which is fine. And then we're going to top it with the rest of the sauce. Just like that. Now at the very top layer, you want to make sure to smooth out the sauce over all of the ravioli. Otherwise the ravioli will get really toasted. I don't think it tastes good like that. So just make sure the sauce is covering it and then you're gonna give it a final layer of cheese. Here is what it looks like before it goes in the oven. I do it at 350 for about 45 minutes. The ravioli, when it comes out, is perfectly cooked. It's not cold in the middle. It, they are perfectly, they kind of puff up a little bit. I serve it with a side salad and we even have leftovers of this. And I, I think this recipe is less than $6 for the entire pan. So you definitely should make these recipes. Let me know which one that you think you would want to try first. I hope this helps on some of your busy nights. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe. Definitely leave me a comment and like the video if you liked it. And we'll see you guys back tomorrow. Bye everybody.